Oh, hello there, YouTube. I just thought I'd show you my electrolysis uh, parts uh, de ruster. Uh, basically, it just consists of a small power supply, which, um, of course, I've got that on 15 volts and can go up to 5 amps. Okay, but you can use a, a car battery charger or even something smaller, like a, uh, you know, a laptop power supply, something like that. So, basically, what I have is a, a positive connector connected to a stainless steel wire. So, I'm going to actually lift this up, so you'll actually see. So it's a tight fit because it's a stainless steel brazing wire. So if I just do that, you can see it coming out, and that's actually wrapped in. You probably see a little part just there. So basically, if I just pull back, in, you can basically consists of curls around the side, making a Faraday cage, okay, with the positive supply. And uh, I just push that back down again, slips under the water. The water is distilled water with. Um, the the the, uh, the the actual what I put in there, of course, that's it there. I will just show you the top. Okay, is sodium carbonate. Okay, which is basically white powder. Be careful with it. Only about one tablespoon to go into this water mixture. Um, then basically, what happens then is there's a I use an aluminium rod, which then I connect the negative to, and I hang the parts off. So um, as I'm holding this camera by my hand I need to pause the video while I hang the parts just to give you an idea what I'm going to be doing is um, these are these are the parts I'm going to be cleaning okay so this is a Clarkson auto lock collet you can see it's rather rusty it's not really bad but you could go at this with a, a you know a wheel and some sandpaper and what have you but this will do it for me this will lift the rust from the surface with electrolysis and I use a rag and I wipe it off. So I'm going to drop it into this water, and I'll show you the, I'll show you what it looks like in the water, and we'll give it sort of half an hour with a few of these. I've got a few of them to do. Yep. So um, we'll come back and we'll show you what the water looks like when it's been as soon as I switch it on. No, so I can't do it really with one hand. So uh, let me come back to you. Just just be a moment. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Why is it always when I film something, it always goes wrong? I do this hundreds of times. And whenever I get the camera up to put some on YouTube and feel busy, it always that takes five times, five times longer. Anyway, here was this one on the end here. We've got to point to it there. It was, uh, there we go. It was this very first one. It was just touching the wire on the side. Uh, so, I'm going to get the fob hanging back in again. You can see now there's bubbles coming up. I've literally just switched it on. And the power supply is pulling if I do that. It's pulling, uh, there we go, just uh, probably come up on uh, 5 amps, just shy of 5 amps there, and that's uh, that's at 14 volts. So, that's what it looks like. And what will actually happen is there'll be a scum of rust that'll actually come up to the surface, which of course I'll scrape that scum off and throw it away. And I mean, you can see the cup water discoloured, that's obviously just the, the rust in the water. And it depends how many parts I do, but you know, it can be sort of. Um, I could certainly keep this like for three months, um, you know, no problem at all, because it is distilled water. And as I say, if I do a lot of parts, there's quite a sediment of rust on the bottom, which of course I drain the water out and just scrape the rust out and throw the rust away. But um, it's a very efficient way of removing rust. So let's give this 10 minutes, and I'll come back in 10 minutes, and we'll, uh, we'll lift one of the parts out and we'll have a look. But um, I'll also show you the colour of the water and how the water changes and how the foam comes up with the, with the rust in the foam. So, um, I'll we'll give you 10 minutes and save you watching it. I'll pause the video because it's boring just washing water bubbling. So, back in 10 minutes. Okay, it's a quick shot of what it looks like after 5 minutes. So, this is 5 minutes in the electrolysis tank, and you can see now that there's foam starting to build up on the surface, uh, which of course is rusty in colour. So, um, we'll give it another 5 minutes and I'll, I'll come back to you. Okay, so we've had 10 minutes. Of the parts being inside the electrolysis chamber, you now see the, the colour, and of course, uh, still pulling five amps. So uh, let's just switch that off. Okay, so we don't have any arcs and sparks if we pull one out. Lift it up and down to get the scum off the top of it. Okay, and you can you can see the rust on the side. Being so cleaner, it looks already. Let's just put it onto this rag. Get my bit of wire out. I'll get a clean cloth. Let's give it a wipe. Try to do this one hand. <laughs> I'm 
must get a camera on a tripod. Oh dear. Right, okay. See, see what's coming off? Easy to, do, easy to do this when you've got two hands on this. Tell you what, I'll leave the camera running so you know I'm not going to swap the path. Let me just put the camera down. You can look at the workbench while I just give us a clean with two hands. One moment. There you go. Right. But that's the nice thing with this. If it's really stubborn, you can use a little wire brush just to help. And especially like with threads in the back, you can do that. But um, I'm mean, not knee really with these because these aren't really heavily rusted. It's just the light coating that was on them. And, um, it's a really nice way of, rem of removing rust. And of course, it uh, it does get into um, all the crevices as well and uh, helps if you've got screws that are sort of bound up. Um, it allows you to get them out. And of course, with these, with these particular um, collets, they've got slits on the side. So that allows you to remove all the crud from the side of the slits as well. As the, uh, the electrolysis bubbles the whole part. And, it's quite amazing. I had um, a four-inch chuck that I actually um, popped in there, complete because I couldn't get it apart at the time. And I mean, it was well rusty. You think probably just throw it in the bin, but I thought, well, no, let's give it a clean and we'll see. It's only just fitted in the chamber, believe it or not. I had to use some tie wraps, stuck them shorting out. It was very close to the the side wall, which of course is a possibly charged part. And um, I'd say half an hour was in there, and when I took that out and wiped it over, I managed to remove all the screws with Allen keys without any problem at all. So uh, here we go. I'll get that clean up now. Let me just pick the camera up and I'll show you that. I not get your finger over the cameras. There we go. So that's the uh, rust on the cloth, and that's the part that's been cleaned up. So there we go. That's just ten minutes. If you left it in longer, you would actually get the darker colour out, get it more to a brighter colour. But as I say, um, 10 minutes basically is, is sufficient. Let's pull another one out. Let's pull this one out on the end. This was, I think, was the most uh, rusty one out of the lot. You get the idea, you just basically wipe the rust off. Yeah. So, um, so, there we go, I just sort of demonstrate to you the, uh, the electrolysis and how easy it is to clean parts. And to give you an idea, the sort of parts that I do sort of clean in there, um, these are some face mill cutters that have been cleaned. So, this is a 125 mil, which you can see there is no rust on that one at all. And that, that sat into that chamber for. 45 minutes and that allowed me to remove all the screws from it get the rust out completely uh, so that's a 125 there's a um, 100 there that's clean it's just a, a shining from WD-40 that's been popped onto it so that's that one and then the one underneath there is a is a 200 I shan't pick that up, that's quite a heavy one. But uh, that's also uh, clean from rust as well. And as I say, these were really, really rusty. This one on the bottom, you well, you couldn't see it for rust. But, uh, that's really what's nice with these chambers. You can put parts in there and just walk away and do something else. And it, uh, and it cleans it up. And of course, um, it's not... Uh, you can just throw it away then. It, you know, it's not harmful really in any way. I mean, although you really wouldn't want to eat... Uh, uh, the soda, but I mean, uh, I say it's only a, a tablespoon that's in there, and I get about three months uh, out of this uh, before I throw it away. It depends really on how many parts I do, but uh, I just keep a little box with the wires in. So there's a little wires in there which you do all different parts. I uh, pulled a few out there, which of course is some of the longer ones, which are for the smaller parts that get hung down the bottom end. So, um, you know, even things like you know, these okay, so that that had, that had a go in, as uh, okay, so that's a multi that's a uh, so that's basically a multi float and as I say that was well rusty and that's cleaned up and uh, yes it is sharp <laughs> and uh, of course there's a two which is a that's a 32 mil two float um, of course ball nose end mill 
Right, with that I'll uh, stop the video and later on I'll, uh, I'll upload this uh, to YouTube and we'll, you know, hopefully uh, you'll benefit from this and if you want to build yourself something like that, I mean, you don't have to have it out of plastic, you could make one out of stainless steel, you just need to insulate then your rod, it doesn't have to be aluminium, it could be copper, it could be brass, it could be steel, of course, you know, aluminium, brass, or something like that, better to be a high conductive because you are passing current through, it's always positive though on the uh, on the ferrite cage and negative then on your parts and uh, you must always do it that way as that's the way the bubbles will leave the parts then um, as I say uh, but plastic's fine and what I've used is I've used uh, welding wire which basically um, you know it's, it's this sort of stuff that's it there and there, there which is um, that's stainless steel uh, 347 which is a high grade um, stainless steel uh, TIG rod and that's what's been wrapped in uh, around this plastic container as I say, yeah, there's many ways of doing it. You could use stainless steel uh, checker plate, uh, you know, sheets of that, or um, you know, or, or grid, you know, uh, stainless steel grid. And of course, I just used what I had to hand. This was a um, council give us this little food waste. That's a joke, isn't it? Look at the size of that one. How many, how many vegetables do you need to get into that? I thought, I know what I can use this for. <laughs> and it's not for food waste. Uh, it's uh, cleaning up my rusty parts. Uh, right, okay, so I'll. Uh, I'll stop the video now and I'll get this uploaded. Thank you. Bye.